Hey, get back here. So it's been a long time since we talked about the MLB market. Let's talk about it right now. So much things to go, so many things to go over, if I can speak correctly. So let's get into it. Um, I got, uh, I don't know, five, six different things I want to talk about. First, flipping. I, I just want to go back to the basics of flipping. You guys know that. Um, generally, you, I mean, you could do it on any card with a larger than 10% break on it, like this Mike Schmidt uh, is example. But you don't get the, the sales don't have that much, and it's highly competitive. So like good good stubs to be made, obviously good stubs to be made at, at, at higher levels too. It's just a little slower, less consistent. So a lot of people prefer to go to like lower overall cards with that ten percent. I mean, this is crazy to the market. I much prefer the MLB market over like say Madden or other games, just like the eBay system. Kirby Yates, good, cool. Um, but like all these cards, you, there's a ton of stubs out to be made, right? A ton. Easy. You just have to put in the time, right? MLB The Show, very easy to grind the market. You know, Madden's pretty easy too, but MLB The Show is just, it's more of a straightforward. You put in a bit at 323 here, and then you put in a sell at 540 once you get it. Super easy to make, way to make stubs. So, anyways, I just want to go over that basic, look through all this stuff. You can generally start in silvers or bronzes if you need to, even lower. Uh, if you, depending on your stub amount that you currently have, but uh, pretty easy to flip. Depends on if you believe your time is worth flipping. If you like working in the market, it does get addicting after a while. Then it does get a little uh, dry and a little uh, boring. So depends on your patience level there. Anyways, let's go on to like the more thought provoking portion of the video. So investments, right? So where we're currently at, right? Investments typically, for those who don't know. In MLB The Show, take place when a card goes from, like, say, a silver to a gold or a gold to a diamond. Those are when, like, the biggest, like, hooray moments happen because the minimum quick sell value goes from, as you see, a lot of the, the golds here are, like, a, a 1,600, 1,700. And then once they hit diamond level, it's 5,000, right? You can easily double, sometimes triple, quadruple, even quintuple your your stubs if you, if you get them for, like, 1,000, right? Or more if they start at silver, go all the way up to diamond. But... It's generally those, you know, ones kind of on the cusp of it that are, that are starting to play well. And how that happens is they play well IRL and they get upgraded on their stats in the live series card. So, I don't know if you guys are stacking cards, which cards you're stacking. Um, it's not something I'm going to speculate on right now. And, and why I'm not speculating on it is because here's the thing. So, if the, if the season starts in late July, like it's going to, and who knows if it even will because, you know, America been very stupid with this whole disease response. But if it does, usually MLB the show goes ahead and uh, takes about a month, right? Re really, we get like static rates every two weeks during the season, but really it's like the second two-week period that they, they initially start because you got to get a little bit of time, you got to get a little sample size in there before you start changing attributes dramatically. So it might not happen until like late August, right? If the, if the season starts late July, the first upgrades might not happen till late August where that way your, your investment will pay out. So do I... Like, think you should have, you know, these stubs tied up for a month and a half, two months almost. If, if your guy gets upgraded, if some of them get upgraded, you know, that's on you, right? Well, some of you, I'm sure, might be switching over to other sports games like Madden. Um, I, myself, will be switching to Madden at that time as that is the game the game for my main channel. Uh, I'll probably be checking in but not doing as much MLB during that period, so... I will not be doing any investments this year. Maybe it's kind of cool. I've done this in the past years after I moved off it. I think it was a couple years ago I invested like crazy amount in, I forgot what Indians pitcher it was, but he ended up, well, I guess I could just filter by it. Is he still with the Indians? Um, but he ended up getting it after I already moved off the game. So like I made a ton of freaking stubs. And, oh yeah, it was Clevenger. Yeah, Clevenger invested. It was like two years ago when he went from silver to gold. Should have gone earlier, but he didn't until I was gone off the game. So like... I was already off the game, but I made a ton of studs. It ended up helping me later in the game because I got back into it later in the game cycle and over the winter and had fun there. But was it, I think it was 18. So, like, will you be playing? That's the bit, first question you got to ask yourself. And then, like, are you willing to tie up stubs for a month and a half, two months? Or, or can you wait to see the start of the season, right? Generally, like, after a couple weeks, you kind of see who's starting hot. But then the thing is, other people see that and they'll start investing. There's always underrated dudes right there. Like, there'll be the obvious upgrade candidates later. Um, maybe I'll do a video as we get closer to that, but I don't know. That's on you. I guess that's risk tolerance for yourself and if you're willing, because there's so much new content coming out and you can continually, you know, grind stubs from different inning programs, different ways of getting it through ranked seasons and, and world series and BR and all those other things. So that's on you and how you want to manage your stubs. All right. S third point I want to talk about team affinity stage three, right? So 
I went through this before. I don't know if I did. I think I did this. Talked about this in the video a little bit on Team Affinity Stage Three. I went through the different prices. I just updated them today. The higher, the better here. The better ratio for your uh, bang for your buck, of course. Nineties uh, is over fifty thousand, so you don't really want those for trade in values because it only counts fifty thousand instead of seventy five thousand. Even eighty nines, you're losing a little bit. But there's the ratio silver market. It's it's funny because the silver market is slightly up ever since the two for one packs went away a couple days ago. Uh, what was that yesterday? Yesterday with Bryant, uh, they have gone up, right? They're going up since they were. So, like, I expect some sort of stub sale to come, right? Don't we expect some sort of stub sale on its way? Generally, that's kind of the cycle that they go through. They go through, like, you know, one thing, and then they bring it back up. So, prices could potentially go back up, but generally the prices, because people are still going to be using these silvers for those exchange sets for Team Affinity. Uh, generally, those silvers, they, they there's still demand out there for them, right? That's why they're priced like this. That's why they're not all 30 uh, stubs. Because people are using them for exchanges between Team Affinity 3 and other things. There is there is exchanges, other exchanges. But generally, it's like the higher overall cards that go up in price. So like somebody like that, that uh, if we go to the market, if, if there's sub sales, people will buy the stubs and then buy the top price card on the market. Like, all right, I'm going to go up. I'm going to go grab myself a, if I, if I you know, if it's half price stubs or whatever it is, they're like, oh, yeah, sweet. Now I can get that, that finally get that reliever that I always wanted, Chapman. So they're going to go ahead spend on Chapman and Chapman could potentially go up. Now, is it guaranteed that we're going to stop sale? No, of course not. So maybe he will stay the same price. Maybe they'll bring that pack back that he's in and that'll that'll lower his price a little bit. Like the flash sale, we saw it lower down to 145 for a little bit. I sadly, I think was on Madden that night for some reason. Oh, maybe it was the beta or something and I didn't get on and I was I was very sad because I actually wanted to buy him back after I sold him. But my mistake for not getting back on, mistiming it. So he could potentially go back up and he'd stay up for a couple weeks or until they bring some sort of way of getting him or attaining him easier. So that's on its way, right? Stub sale, we'll see. Silver prices are rising. So it's not it's not like a terrible time to be selling off silvers, golds, whatever. Uh, but obviously it's not the greatest time if a stub sale is coming because you know that generally inflates a little bit of the market. People might be buying some of those cards more to unlock some of these Team Affinity 3s. Even though Team Affinity 3 themselves aren't going for a ton outside of a few, the Team Affinity 3, people want to kind of like go through it. Did I just face? There it is. Um, they're not going for like a whole, like their 99 overall is going for like 30K, which is just insane to me. This Jim Tomey, you can see how I did. I mean, this is event stats, but I hit 586 with him in the event. Whoop. 586 with him with 12 home runs and, and 70 at bats. So OPS in 1800 with him. So yeah, they're insane, but like I feel like they're underrated for how good they are. Even Yount, like look at that, the like, contact vision. I hit 455 with him. So even Tommy, I think, is better than Yount. And Yount, Yount didn't play well for me in the field. I hated Yount. I think I want uh, short stops with as much speed as possible. But anyways, like these things are underrated. And they're going for not that much. But people are going to want to advance their team affinities too, right? They're, they're, like Maybe a lot of people that have been buying stuff have already bought through their team affinity stages. Me, I've done a couple. Uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of cool because I mean, with team affinity 2 to 3, it was from like April to late June. So that took like two months, a little over that. So like with Team Affinity Stage 4, if this stuff came out during the summer for this for this one, Palmer, this says fall. So don't expect this till like September, um, ex Stage 4. Because I don't think it'll go like September, October, November. That's kind of, November's kind of more towards winter. And like October is like World Series if we're playing it this year. So which I would expect us to because a lot of money to be made out there so i do expect that in september sometime for stage four so people will want that maybe as we get closer to september you start hoarding more of those silvers but that's a long ways away from now so it's not really worth thinking about at the moment so silvers i feel like i kind of like at at their spot right now and it's not a it's not the worst like i, I guess some other exchanges could come that would boost the price of silver say if they do like a silver master obviously the honest wagner type set like in the uh, collections we get something like that this year like we got last year, some sort of like big old set to kind of like complete everything. That would rise the prices, but more specifically of like rare cards, golds uh, that have like coming out, but from past programs and stuff. So that's, that's you know, I, I think something worth looking at. That came out during July last year, Honest Wagner. I guess I can double check. Honest Wagner, and will be the show 19. That one I see... July 25th last year, the 99 Honest Wagner came out, I see from the subreddit. So, there's a few different things coming. Um, obviously, we're going to see the updated schedule here. We're just getting, it, it's only given us for the next two days here. 
uh, with the Conquest map on the 10th Headliners pack there. After that, we'll see what's coming next week. I mean, who knows? Hopefully some cool stuff. Like this past couple weeks of MLB Show content has been insane. It's been some of the best content I've seen. Right? We got the, the World Series rewards are actually worth it this time versus the previous month. I like it. So like the Honest Wagner set, like can you imagine how many people would want to do it if it's like Joe DiMaggio? Uh, Roberto Clemente, I'd definitely do it. I, I'd love Roberto Clemente. That's my number one want for this game going forward. Cap Anson, Hank Aaron, Barry Bonds, Tris Speaker, etc. Uh, there's so many other cards that could come. And like a Barry Bonds card would be fucking insane if it was a signature series for that thing. Like if they brought him. That would be like the largest like mid-game mic drop that I've seen in my life. Derek Jeter would be kind of cool too. Um, but I, I don't think he'd be as cool to me as the other guys. Like, I'd totally go down for a Joe D, but here it is. There it is. Who knows? That'll be an exciting set. I mean, it could be like one of the, like a car that we've already had, right? It could be Willie Mays. Like, we've we've already owned him uh, before last year. We've we've had Babe Ruth last year, Gehrig. So it could be like one of those Ted Williams types for that set again. I'd like a new car like they brought out, like an old uh, Honest Wagner last year. Something like that again would be kind of cool. Um, a new legend for that big set versus like you know a Gary or a Ruth or someone we've already had anyways wait I think there's something else no that's what I want to talk about today I hope the video was good for you like it was for me thanks for watching call to action thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if you didn't see you tomorrow